Welcome to Fairlawn Avenue Church on this Christmas Eve. We've come together this afternoon from our homes, gathered around a table or snuggled up on the couch to remember the Christmas story. It's a story about small things, a village couple, a little town, a newborn baby. It's also a story about big things, about the biggest thing of all, bigger than we can possibly imagine God's love for us and for all things. It's a story so big that there's room for everyone and everything. There's a place for each of us in this story, the story which is still being told. We're so glad that you have joined us. So let's get ready to remember. When all has gone quiet and the world begins to sleep, tucked in and snug beneath a blanket of frost, when the universe holds its breath and angels begin to stretch their wings and stars begin to slide into constellations of hope. When music seems to hang in the air and creation hums its own carol about the longing for light and birth again from winter time, then then the waiting ones gather to listen to these rumors and whisper about the birth of a child made all of light and together pass the word that soon and very soon Advent will slip into sign and waiting into birth. So let us gather with ever beating hearts, staying with Mary and Joseph, wondering and laboring, longing, expecting the promise to break through this night. When all has gone quiet and the world begins to sleep, tucked in and snug beneath a blanket of frost, when the universe holds its breath and angels begin to stretch their wings and stars begin to slide into constellations of hope. When music seems to hang in the air and creation hums its own carol about the longing for light and birth again from winter time. Then the waiting ones gather to listen to these rumors and whisper about the birth of a child made of light and together pass the word that soon and very soon Advent will slip into sign and waiting into birth. So let us gather with ever beating hearts, staying with Mary and Joseph, wondering laboring, longing, expecting the promise to break through this night. It's Christmas Eve, finally. What a long wait it's been. To help us in our waiting here at Fairlawn, we lit a candle week by week to show that each time we were just that little bit closer. We lit a candle of hope because you need hope if you're going to make it to the very end. We lit a candle of peace because peace is something we all long for, we all wait for. Peace between peoples and nations, peace between faiths and cultures, peace in our country and in our community, peace in our hearts and in our homes. We lit a candle of joy a candle of a different color to help us remember that without joy, we'll go tired of waiting and give up before the wait's over. And we lit a candle of love. Love is experienced and expressed in many ways. Whatever your experience is of love and how that love finds expression in your life, you are welcome here. Families come in many different shapes and sizes, and some of us live alone, and some of us live with a lot of people. Whatever shape your family's in, however your family has shaped you or you shaped it, you're welcome here. For today, we light the fifth candle, the one that lets us know the wait is over. Today, we remember that Jesus came into the world like a light coming into the dark, like dawn coming into the night. 
Today we remember that Jesus comes into the world again and again, into your life, into my life, into the life of others. This is an invitation to come and see the light, to let it live in us and us in it. Will you come and see the light? Every family has stories, stories we tell over and over to remind us of who we are, of who we love, and who we miss. Our stories remind us of the past, hold us in the present, and help us imagine our way into our future. Last year, Barbara Springay told a story to some Fairlawn friends about when she was a little girl living in Ontario. It was a story about Christmas Day 70 years ago. It was a great story, the kind of story that passes down through generations. Her friend Kathleen, who is a writer, said, can I write that story? And her friend Jill, who paints, said, can I paint pictures to go with that story? And Barbara said, yes. And so other friends said, can we help make this book? Yes, yes, was her response. The book is called One Snowy Christmas. I want to read this lovely story to you tonight. Are you ready for story time? Are you comfortable? It snowed so much before Christmas that the snowbanks were up to the roof of the general store. The farmers had made a track across the fields in case the road through the village became blocked. No one used a car locally in the winter. Everyone relied on a horse-drawn sleigh. On Christmas Day, the sky was clear. Barbara was excited because they were going to her grandparents for Christmas dinner and she would see her cousins. She zipped up her one-piece snowsuit and pulled on her galoshes. Her dad had gone to the barn to harness the team. Their horses, Maud and Prince, would pull the sleigh to Grandma's. She could hear the chimes now as Dad pulled up at the door. 
He was very proud of the brass bells his horses wore and the lovely sounds they made. Let's go, cried Barbara. Her little sister and baby brother were always so slow. When they were all settled on the fresh hay, covering the bottom of the sleigh, Maud and Prince began to pull and the sleigh moved forward. Barbara and her sister were snuggled under the buffalo robe. Mom held their brother under a blanket. It was a three mile trip to their grandparents' farm and they needed to keep warm. As they passed the one room school where Barbara was a grade five student, her sister said, why does it take so long to get to grandma's? Barbara was thinking the same thing. She couldn't wait to show her cousins her new Christmas outfit, but they still had an hour to go. At last, the team pulled into Grandma and Grandpa's yard. Barbara spied her cousins just going in the door. She jumped off the sleigh and ran after them. We beat you, called Helen. Barbara ran in the door, whipped off her hat and mitts, threw her galoshes on the pile, and unzipped her snowsuit. I love your sweater, Barbara, said Gail. Is it from Eaton's catalog? Yes, I just got it for Christmas, said Barbara, and this plaid skirt, too. The girl said a quick hello to the grandparents, aunts and uncles. Before Barbara's dad came in from unharnessing the team, the girls had run up to the attic. This was one of their favorite places in the big house. The attic was full of things from the olden days. There was a gramophone that played music on old records. There was a trunk stuffed with clothes. Gail liked to try on the blouse with all the tiny buttons. Barbara liked the gloves that came all the way up her arms. Helen was trying on a purple hat with a feather. I can't believe Grandma used to wear these clothes, she said. They are way too small for her. Girls, dinner, cried Grandma. They clattered down the stairs to the kitchen where the delicious smell of roast chicken, mashed potatoes, turnip and carrots awaited them. Grandma cooked everything on a huge wood stove. The kitchen was Barbara's favorite place after the attic. The room was warm and full of wonderful aromas. For dessert, Barbara's mother brought out the steamed pudding. She always made it for Christmas and served it with brown sugar sauce. And after that, Aunt Anne produced the cake she always brought from Toronto because it was Grandma's birthday. I'm stuffed, everyone said but they had room for a slice of cake, nevertheless. Suddenly, one of the uncles cried, Look, it's snowing pretty heavily now. Barbara rushed to the window. The snow was coming down steadily and had covered all the tracks in the yard. I'll help you harness the team, said Bart to her dad. Bart was the hired man and like a part of the family. Barbara said her mother, get dressed quickly and help your sister. We need to leave right away. The men hitched up Maud and Prince, who'd been enjoying a nice rest in the barn. Soon the family was climbing up on the sleigh. The chimes jingled as they rolled out of the yard. Goodbye, goodbye. Get home safe. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Barbara could not see a thing in front of her face except snowflakes. But she felt they were safe with Maud and Prince. The horses knew the way home, even in the dark. Why is Grandma's birthday on Christmas, asked her sister after a few minutes. She was born on December the 25th, replied her mother. I'm glad my birthday isn't on Christmas, said Joy. Barbara silently agreed. Their little brother Donald had fallen asleep and Mum laid him down on the bottom of the sleigh. He looks like little Lord Jesus asleep in the hay, said Joy. Barbara smiled. Joy said funny things sometimes. She was only five years old. Barbara was 10. She was awfully glad she wasn't five. The horses trudged on. They were moving very slowly as the snow was very deep now. Finally, Barbara's mother said, we're just coming up to the school. This was good to hear. It meant they were almost at the track that cut across the fields and they would be home soon. Sure enough, the team started to round the bend. Suddenly there was a jolt. The sleigh tilted to one side and stopped. Maud is down, cried Barbara's dad. Maud had stepped into a deep drift. She couldn't move. 
She began to thrash about and make the most awful shrill whinnying. I'll have to unharness the team, Dad said, as he jumped off the sleigh. Be careful. Barbara could hear fear in her mum's voice. Dad could be injured trying to separate Maud and Prince. It's all right, I've got it, he called. He unhitched the horses from the sleigh. Prince was loose and able to move forward, but poor Maud was stuck. We'll have to walk the rest of the way, said Dad. I'll lead Prince. But we can't leave Maud, cried Barbara. We must leave her. I'll come back with ropes and shovels and try to dig her out. Maybe Mac can help me. Mac was their neighbor on the next farm. The family began to trek through the deep snow, trying to stay on the track, although they could barely see in front of them. Dad led Prince, Mum carried Donald, and Barbara and Joy held hands. Barbara looked back. She could still hear Maud crying out. It was the worst sound she had ever heard. How could they leave her all alone in the dark, unable to move? What would happen to Maud? It was a long, exhausting walk. All thoughts of their wonderful Christmas visit were gone. All they could think of was about poor, dear Maud. When they finally reached home, Dad ran in to phone the neighbor. What a relief it was to know Mac was coming. He brought his team and sleigh, and the two men set off with ropes and shovels and lanterns, leading Prince. Barbara stood at the kitchen window, staring out at the swirling snow. Would they be able to rescue Maud? Was she going to be all right? The men were gone for what felt like an eternity. Then she heard the familiar chimes. She peered into the darkness. After a few moments, she made out some shapes. There was the sleigh with a horse. Or was it two? Yes, it was the team. Mom, Mom, they got Maud out. She's safe. The team was coming home and Maud was safe. The men were able to dig her out with their shovels. She was unharmed and they were able to hitch her to the sleigh beside her partner, Prince. The chimes that Christmas night were the best sound Barbara had ever heard. Every Christmas after that, they would tell the story of the time Maud got trapped in the snow and had to be rescued. Her mother always said it was a Christmas miracle. If families have stories that help them remember who they are, so do faith communities and churches like Fairlawn. Our story is old, over 2,000 years old. It is a story Christians have told for all these years to help us remember God's love for us and for the world. Every Christmas Eve, we tell this story about the birth of a baby, a baby boy called Jesus. Let's listen to the story of the baby and his parents, the story of the stable and the shepherds and the star. About this time, Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire. This was the first census when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to travel to their own ancestral hometown to be accounted for. So Joseph went from the Galilean town of Nazareth up to Bethlehem in Judah, David's town, for the census. As a descendant of David, he had to go there. He went with Mary, his fiance, who was pregnant. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger, because there was no room in the hostel. There were shepherds camping in that neighborhood. They'd set up night watches over their sheep. And suddenly God's angels stood among them and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angels said, don't be afraid. 
I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that's meant for everybody worldwide. A savior has been born in David's town. This is what you are to look for, a baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. At once, the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace to all men and women on earth who bring pleasure to God. withdrew into heaven, the shepherds talked it over. Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left running and found Mary and Joseph, and the baby lying in a manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angels had said about this child and all who heard the shepherds were impressed. Mary kept all these things to herself, holding them dear, deep within herself. The shepherds returned and let loose, glorifying and praising God for everything they'd heard and seen. It turned out exactly the way they'd been told. When I was a child, I spent a lot of time on my grandparents' farm in West River Station. There was a cow, some chickens, a rooster, and best of all, there were horses, big horses, so very strong, so very gentle. From those horses, I learned about patience, hard work, pleasure in play and running in a field. But most of all, I learned about love. Theirs for my grandfather and his for them. Some of the best children's books about the nativity take seriously the presence of animals at the birth of Jesus. Well, after all, his bed was a feeding trough. There would have been animals, surely, keeping that space warm for the three humans there. 
As a child who spent hours in my grandfather's barn, I knew about the warmth of animals, especially on cold winter days, sitting on some hay watching Grampy milk the cow, the cats waiting to get some milk before we left, the horses waiting for their lump of sugar. Love comes in many forms. This week, I received a gift, a gorgeous illustrated book called How Many Miles to Jerusalem. It has all the characters, gentle Mary, great with child, a sympathetic innkeeper, an ox and a donkey, wandering shepherds, three wise men, a bright star, a cruel king, a lamb, a host of angels, and a newborn babe. The book ends with the angels and the baby. We are the angels. We are your secret voices. Listen, this baby, rejoice, this hope, this peace. Wandering shepherds and wise men, we will enfold you. We will lead Mary and Joseph with our light and the babe. I am the light of light, the baby who will cradle the world. In your heart, hold me. I will never leave you. Holy truth for a very holy eve. I invite you to join me in prayer this night of nights. Loving one, birthing newness in your love for us and for creation, we pray on this day for travelers, for those who are traveling home for Christmas, those who are traveling because they have no place, no shelter they can call their own, for those whose home is on the road. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the children who will be born this night and for their families and ask your blessing on their lives. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick and for all who care for them and who pray for them. We pray for those who have died, for those we miss at our table, how much we love them and miss them, how we carry their stories in our lives. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves, for our needs, for our worries, for our hopes, and for our dreams. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with us through this night. Be in our memories. Be in our stories. Be in our telling and be in our understanding and in our loving. And so we pray. Amen. By golden starlight was Jesus born, light from the universe to dance on a winter's night. By starlight's path, the shepherds found the child, love's child, born to show us the way. May we leave this sacred time with the joy of God's laughter to cheer us, the joy of the baby Jesus to sweeten us, and the joy of the Spirit's love to walk with us. Amen. May you have a blessed night, and may your moral be a good one. Merry Christmas, my friends.